Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Locked In Anglers channel. Today I'm going to break down how I love to target big smallmouth early in the season right as they're about to spawn. For me, a glide bait is the best way to catch a really big smallmouth that's already up there in the shallows, cruising and getting ready to make a bed. Um, there's a handful of different glide baits that I rely on. Typically, you'll see me throwing either the River to Sea S waiver or the Storm Marashi Glide. Both of them, great presentations to catch big smallmouth early in the year. For me, I always start with the River to Sea S waiver. This bait is just a tried and true, fantastic bait to target big smallmouth that are setting up on key pieces of structure, ready to spawn. So I tend to fish these in a rather lethargic manner. I'm basically slow reeling these so that they can just walk in that S pattern through the water. And then every seven or eight reel turns, I give it a quick pop so it takes, it takes a turn right or left and then spins and sits and turns around and looks right at the fish. Um, it's a really good way to elicit a reaction strike in, a, in fish that are just really trying to get that one big last meal before they go up and spawn. For these S waivers, I really only throw two main colors. The first being the light trout color and the second being a terminator or a bit of a more translucent bait fish color. So tried and true, I always start with the light trout color. It's a realistic looking paint color, but it doesn't really look like a lot of bait fish. But for some reason, this bait all around the country is the number one performing S waiver bait. And it, it just flat out gets bit. This bait in particular, I mean, you'll see it's like there's paint coming off of it. It's just caught so many big smallmouth and largemouth. Um, but for smallmouth, being that they really feed with their, with their eyes more than anything, I really like this lighter presentation because it not only has more drawing power, but it also, it also helps me see the bait in the water which gives an, an ability to contrast what's behind my bait. And it's typically the bait I can see big smallmouth following a lot easier because they look starkly different than the white profile of this. Um, the other color I throw, like I mentioned, is that Terminator color. Uh, for our bodies of water, we have a lot of kokanee bodies of water and it really represents a kokanee quite well. Um, but in any time where I'm fishing gin clear water, and, or, or maybe there's just pretty low wind, I'll go to this more translucent color. It's still really natural, puts off a, a lot of drawing power, but it just really helps get bit a little bit better when they're just slapping at the more just stark and bold colors of the light trout. So if the bite's really going though, that's when things start to get really fun and we go a little bit bigger and switch to either a Storm Arashi Glide or the I'm a Glide Fluke. So I'll start with my favorite. So this one is, uh, this is a bait that Brandon Polonix helped design and he's, as you guys know, a fantastic swim bait fisherman. Uh, this is a seven inch glide. This is a kokanee pattern, for example, but I think this is a fantastic color for big shad bodies of water and kokanee bodies of water. It has a very wide glide. You can see it just by the, by the pitch of it. It has a very wide gliding action, and when you uh, when you, when you when you're slowly reeling it through the water, it just makes this big S pattern. You give it a reel pop, and it'll dart and just turn around completely 180 degrees and look straight at that fish, and it elicits a really good reaction bite when you do that. But this is the bait that I usually go for when I am really trying to catch a big one. Um, smallmouth this time of year, they're really opportunistic. Um, if I can get on any bit of a glide bait bite, get a couple of bites on the S waiver, I'm going to upgrade to this right away just because I know I'm going to be targeting the right class of fish and the design of this bait has a it's really helpful for landing fish because as you as you can see by the by the hook it's on an articulating ring attached to the split ring which really helps with those big small mouth that are jumping out of the water going crazy by the boat it really helps keep them pinned as the bait doesn't ever kink up and you can keep a really solid hook in the fish. The other one that I throw 
is the I'm a Glide Fluke. Typically, I'm looking for a little bit warmer waters to throw this, more as we're getting right up before the spawn. And this has an insane action. It's erratic darting action. It looks like a giant fluke. Basically, you mix a glide bait and a fluke, and it makes the glide fluke. Um, you're popping this, you're working this aggressively, and when they're, when they're active, when there's a little bit of ripple on the water, or it's just a, it, they're just in a really large feeding mood, this bite, this bait gets bit like crazy, and they will come up and take the rod out of your hands to try to get this. So where I'm targeting fish with, this, with these baits is I'm really looking for abnormalities up shallow. So whether that be a, an end of a dock, isolated boulders, isolated wood, channel bends, uh, points, shallow points, long tapering points, or any sort of element that provides an abnormality to the bank that the fish are going to stop on and stage on before they spawn. Um, boat positioning for these is incredibly important. Um, for me, I like to bring these either diet or either parallel to the bank, or I like to actually bring them at a 45 degree angle coming from deep to shallow. So I put my boat really shallow. I throw it out over the transition of where you can't see the bottom of the lake anymore and slowly work that bait back in, trying to get it over or on top of any piece of structure underneath the, underneath the water. Um, the other one that I mentioned that is pretty pivotal this time of year is docks and more importantly the ends of docks and along the sides of docks. Um, you want to get this bait as close to the dock as possible because those fish are staging up using those pilings as their ambush points and you want to get this bait to go swim right beside the those pilings make an erratic action and try to elicit that reaction strike so those fish can come in and just absolutely smoke it. Um, so when I'm fishing a dock I'm, as it, usually I'm typically going, I'm typically going down a, a large line of docks. So my first cast is always get that across past the face of the dock as tight as to the, as the dock as I can. And I work it, work the bait right along it, give it a couple pops right as it gets to kind of the key zones of the corners of the docks or any sort of ladder, um, or any other element that like kind of changes the formation of the dock. And after I make a couple casts on that, I'll bring the boat out into deeper water if it's a really short dock, or I'll bring the boat really shallow and I'll make that cast out along the, the entire length of the dock as the fish can be staging on any of the pilings going in. Uh, and so it basically allows you to just keep the bait in the strike zone for the longest period of time possible. For lakes that don't really have a lot of docks, I'm really, you're really gonna just be looking for um, subtle transitions, whether it's uh, like a grass to rock transition, um, a grass flat with some holes in it, a sand flat with some boulders, a sand flat with some wood, and just basically using this bait to cover a ton of water and try to target those most aggressive fish that are up there looking to spawn but just not ready to commit yet. This is a fantastic way to pick them up right before that. The one thing that I do notice with, with, the, with the glide bait bite in general, for, especially for smallmouth, is that bite, once they get on the beds, the glide bait bite really slows down. It, uh, it's really hard to actually catch them on the glide bait, but it's not a time that I put the glide bait away. Um, the other really helpful use of a glide bait is it's really good for getting fish to recenter on a bed. Say you're working a bed fish, you spook it or you miss a hook set on it, fish kind of spooks off, throwing a big glide bait back over their bed totally freaks them out and it can actually get the fish to lock back onto that bed that you were fishing and just reset the count with that fish and give you another opportunity to catch it. So there's really two upgrades that I make to every glide bait that I throw and it's really to just stack the odds in my favor when you're targeting these really large fish. The first is I always upgrade my split rings to owner hyperwire split rings. Super important to have the best connection between the bait and the hook as you're having these big fish jump really close to the boat. You don't want to have any of those points of failure. The other is the hook itself. I always upgrade my hooks to owner ST56 treble hooks. Super sticky hooks, really sharp, but the 3X element of the owner ST56s just provides a really thick, strong hook that won't bend out, even if these fish are jumping really close to the boat. I think that's about all I've got for that early season uh, glide bait, but 
Really appreciate you guys tuning into the channel and feel free to drop a like and subscribe if you like the content and want to see more. Have a good one, YouTube. Tight lines.